rejoicing in the Lord today that we can celebrate Christmas not only on the 25th of December but every day of our lives because Jesus has been born joyful joyful we adore thee God of glory Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away, giver of Fill us with the light of day. Come on, praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Chanting 
Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, creator of everything that is and will ever be. It was a holy night indeed. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth Oh, fill of hope, the weary world rejoices for young
and contrite spirit Lord you will not despise are you here to give to the Lord over the skies of Bethlehem appeared a star while angels sang to lowly shepherds three wise men seeking
all said, Amen and Amen. Good morning. I am Nap Caballero. I grew up in a Christian home and accepted Jesus at the young age of 12 and became active in the music ministry. Singing, acting, and dancing were among the many school activities I really enjoyed doing. With all of these things, exciting things going on, a question lingered in my mind. Why am I attracted to the same sex? I did have homosexual tendencies, but the biblical principles regarding homosexuality are quite glaring to my spiritual eyes. I know it is wrong, and the Bible clearly tells us it is wrong, yet in my weakness, I gave in to my lust again and again. I would feel great guilt and remorse, but I felt so helpless. I would say to God, I don't want this. Why do you allow me to be like this? Unaware of my growing spiritual rebellion, I thought to myself, if God is not taking away this feeling and change me, then probably God just wants me to remain this way. God's silence on my question became my open opportunity to indulge myself in relationships with the same sex from my teenage years to my early 20s. I tried to escape from my struggle with homosexuality by going to the United States, only to realize that I could never completely escape the emotional ties with the same sex by simply escaping geographically. I needed a miracle. I joined a church where Christian friends provided a shoulder to cry on, and I found myself strong and willing to do His will and plan. There, I met a lovely, godly Christian Filipino nurse who was looking for a Christian group to fellowship with. We began to date, and I was finally in love with the opposite sex. The romance was right, but not, did, did not last long. I returned to Manila to finish my studies and would be a good testimony to my mama and papa. We both agreed that we kept in touch, but after a few, few months, I received a letter from her telling me that she had accepted a proposal from a former suitor who became a Christian. In my sadness, I allowed myself to enter the vicious cycle of homosexual life once again. I again cried to God, asking, God, why don't you want to change me? It was at the time that Brother Fio invited me to join CCF Freedom Ministry. There, I discovered that upon revisiting my past, I remembered I was sexually abused at around 9 to 10 years old by a neighbor who's two years older than me. And I also discovered that although my father was a good provider, he was not able to directly communicate and express his love for me as one of his sons. He was always at work, and I have to spend most of my time with my mother and sisters. Even if I faithfully attended our meetings, the struggle continued and even became worse. I led a secret life, committing immorality each time the opportunity is open. I got hooked on internet pornography and cyber sex, which led to actual encounters in motels, cinemas, and video rooms. I would attend midweek services and would meet up with someone to sleep with him after. These activities also paid toll on my finances. I maxed out my credit cards and took personal loans to sustain my whims and desires. I, end up, I ended up broke and emotionally devastated. I became a seemingly hopeless urban professional working every day to pay off my debts. Having nowhere else to go, I went on a prayer retreat, and on September 19, 2006, I rededicated my life to Jesus. God spoke to my heart, saying, I have given you everything. I have saved you. I was victorious over death. It is finished. What more do you want? Sige, sabihin mo lahat dito, mag-usap tayo. Ano pang gusto mo? It was such a life-shaking moment that everything in me was crushed to pave the way for a new life. I was about to begin. I said, Opo, Lord, sorry po. Suko na ako. You won. 
I was never the same ever since. I came down a changed man. By God's grace since that time, I have not engaged in any form of homosexual or immoral activity. From that moment, God has given me a burning desire to win souls for Christ. What really interests me now is really seeing people give their lives completely to Jesus. God impressed upon my heart to, to deal with my financial, financial trouble and I have since made arrangements with the banks to pay off my outstanding debts. I have recommitted myself to the Living Free Ministry and joined their efforts in bringing salvation and true freedom to the gays and lesbians who need to know the liberating power of the Lord. I am now part of CCF D12 based in Makati and by God's grace, I have been serving as a D group leader. Together with Brother Yed, we hold two discipleship groups and one group has ex-gays as its members who allow themselves to discover and learn God's true design for us. By the grace of God, we are on our way to our third year of our regular weekly meetings. And God has even allowed me to be assigned as assistant ministry head for CCF's Living Free Ministry. Some time ago, I was introduced to a female teacher who fears the Lord and serves the Lord consistently and unswervingly. After a period of courtship, we exchanged our vows in the glorious day of April 17, this year. And we are now expecting the birth of a baby girl in March next year. Undoubtedly, God is in the business of changing lives. I have seen it continually happening in my life, and I have proven myself that God never fails. Praise God. Let's give God another clap offering. Do you want to know if it's a boy or a girl? Okay, he told me, but I will give you the privilege of asking now. God is really in the business of transforming lives. Amen? And I cannot imagine what would have happened if there was no Christmas. So this morning, I want to greet all of you. Merry Christmas. Turn to your neighbor. Merry Christmas. Don't be ashamed to say Merry Christmas. In some parts of the world, they don't want to call it Merry Christmas. They want to call it Happy Holidays. Now, how ridiculous can it be when you want to celebrate the birthday of Christ, Christmas, and you don't want to call it Christmas? Now, how would you feel if it's your birthday and we all come to your house and we give gifts to each other, but you don't give gifts to the birthday celebrant? How would you feel? Well, that's what we do every year. Many people forget that the meaning of Christmas is all about Jesus. How do you spell Christmas? The first word is Christ. What's the second one? Mass. Somebody said, if you remove Christ, you miss a Savior. You know how to spell? M-A-S. You miss a Savior. No Christ, no Christmas. No Christmas, no hope. No Christ, no transformation. I don't know what you are struggling, but I have good news for you. Christ can transform our lives. Praise God. In behalf of our family, I want to thank you for all your gifts. Keep praying for me. By the way, do you know how to pray for me? Three things. The prayer of Jesus. Number one, what? You recall? Pray for my protection. Number two, pray for sanctification. Number three, pray for unity. That our community will be a community made of love. 
All the group leaders, all the group leaders, this is yours for free. Now, the other members, we are selling this 150 pesos, okay? CCF diary, CCF calendar. If you are a D group leader, please collect this, okay? Now, if you want to get a free copy, sign up, be a D group leader, and you'll get one next year. Next year. <laughs> I'm excited with what God is doing. This morning, we shall finish our study on the book of John. John chapter 20. 21. Let's review the summary of the book of John. Let's read this together. John chapter 20. Everybody, please stand up so that you will understand as we finish the book of John. It's very appropriate for Christmas, and I will tell you why. Now, in summary, John chapter 20. Let's read verse 31. This has been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Notice. This is written, the Bible was written for what purpose? That you may believe. Believe what? Number one, Jesus is the Christ. Notice the pronoun, the Christ. Definitive pronoun. In the Greek language, no other. This is it, the Christ. And then what else? That you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. For what purpose? That you may have eternal life. That is God's gift for us. Christmas is God's gift for us. He gave us His best, His Son, that we might have life. What will you give Jesus this Christmas? Let's read John chapter 21. The center of John 21, the whole theme is about this. Let's read this together. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him a second time. No, he told him, Tend my lambs. He said to him the second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said to him, Shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him, Third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. I'm going to explain to you the meaning of these verses. But first, what's the message today? Do you love me more than this? Will you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor. Jesus is asking you, do you love me more than this? You know, I've been meditating on this verse. Jesus is asking me, Peter, do you love me more than this? What is this? More than what? I'm going to explain to you in a short while. Remember, Christmas is celebration of the coming of the Son of God. He gave us His all. What will you give Him? Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for reminding us that you love us so much that you gave us your best. We thank you for sending your son. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for what you have done in the life of Nap. We thank you for transforming our friend. We thank you that nothing is impossible with you. I now pray for Nap and his wife and the baby that's going to be born that you will use this family for your glory, for your honor. Will you protect Nap from his past sins? Just as I ask you to protect all of us from our past sins. Lord, we are all equally sinful. We have different kind of sins, but we are all sinners before your eyes. I thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for transforming the life of Nap. I now pray that you continue to use him mightily in the years to come, that he will be an encouragement to many others. And I pray and I thank you for his wife. And now I pray for the country, that you have grace and mercy on the Philippines. Give us good leaders. Lord, I pray that you will be the one to get rid of graft and corrupt people. Be the one to get rid of leaders who are corrupt. And only you can change this country. Give our people a new heart. Give the leaders a new heart to love you and serve you, 
to love this country more than they love themselves. And Father God, I thank you that nothing's impossible with you. We thank you for our country, for the freedom to worship you, for the freedom to gather together. Lord, will you just take over and have mercy and grace on your people. And now I commit to you all the D-group leaders. I thank you for their dedications. Will you continue to use them, bless them? And I thank you for our building project. Thank you for raising the money. I pray you continue to raise the money that our headquarters, our training center, will redound to your glory and to your honor, that it will be used to transform many lives. Remind us this is not going to be a CCF monument, but this is going to be a center where lives will be transformed, where people will be blessed. Lord, I pray for the architect. Thank you for architect go. I thank you for the contractor. I just pray that everything will be done to the best of their abilities and that we will save all unnecessary expenses and that you continue to provide, bless your people, that we can continue to help one another. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The Bible tells us to love Jesus, you must understand his love. So the Bible tells us we love because he first loved us. Say that with me. We love because he first loved us. Now, what's the message this morning? Do you recall what's the message? Do you love me more than this? Now, look at your neighbor in the eyes. Okay? Look at them in the eyes. I'm looking at you now. Okay? Do you love Jesus? You ask, ask your neighbor. Jesus is asking you, do you love me? I cannot answer that for you. But I want to believe you love Jesus. But perhaps you need to learn how to love him. Years ago, my wife asked me, Honey, I really struggle. Do I love Jesus? I know my wife loves Jesus. If ever there is one person, I know it's my wife. But my wife was asking me, How do I really love Jesus. And I told my wife, the secret of loving Jesus is not to focus on your love for Jesus. It is to focus on his love for you. The more you know about his love, the more you learn to love Jesus. Understand? So the secret of loving God, the secret of loving Jesus is not focusing on how much you love him, but focus on how much he loves you. So turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Now the question is this. Do you love me more than this? Say that with me one more time. Do you love me more than this? I don't know your answer, but that's his question to you this Christmas. Do you love me more than this? What's the meaning? I'm going to explain to you. Let's look at the context of this verse. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 21. Let's read that together, everybody. John chapter 21. After these things... Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. That's another name for the Sea of Galilee. And he manifested himself this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Meaning, seven of the close disciples of Jesus. These were fishermen. Out of, those fee, out of the disciples, you have seven fishermen. These were fishermen. Let's continue reading. Verse 3, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will also come with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Now let me ask you a question. Who was the leader of this group? Peter. Why did he say, let's go fishing? Is it possible? that Peter was discouraged with himself. Remember, he denied Jesus three times. Is it possible that in the minds of Peter, I have blew it, I've blown it. How can Jesus ever use me? How can Jesus ever love me? Is that possible? I think so. Is it possible in the mind of Peter, maybe the best thing for me to do is to go back fishing? I got to provide for my family. I got to go back to have my career. Is that possible? Yes. Now, what's the miracle? The miracle is this. That night, the Bible says, they caught nothing. These are professional fishermen. The whole night, they caught what? Nothing. Why nothing? 
You know, the Bible is amazing. When the Bible tells you a story, sometimes you have to know the reason. Let's read. When the day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? Now, in the Greek grammar, the answer is no. The answer is no. In Tagalog, wala kayong isda, no? Yeah, my Tagalog translation. So Jesus asked the disciples, wala kayong nahuli, no? What did they answer? None. Jesus said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find a catch. They cast, and they were not able to hold it because of the great number of fish. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it make any difference to, cut the, to throw the net on the right side versus the left side? First miracle, zero. Caught nothing. Second miracle, with one throw. The Bible tells us the net was full of fish. It was so full, they could not even bring it inside the boat. What can you learn? Many times, God loves you, but you don't realize it. He will allow you to fail. Because failure is never final when it comes to the people of God. Have you failed? Now, what is going on in your mind when you have failed? You probably think, this is it. How can God ever love me? I failed Him. But can I tell you why failure is not always bad? Especially when you are following the Lord. Because when you fail, it makes you more humble. And when you are more humble, you listen. Do you know proud people who are always successful, they don't listen? There are some people today who will not listen. Have you heard the story of Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs is the founder of the Apple computer. Would you believe it? He started with a few people. In 10 years' time, he built it to a multi-billion dollar company, over 4,000 employees. At the age of 30, the company was doing so well, he got fired from his own company. He got kicked out of his own company. If you read his story, he said, this is the best thing that happened to me. Why? Once upon a time, he was proud. He said, I was publicly shamed. It was painful. But he said, I will never trade it because it was the best thing that happened to me. What happened to him? When he was humbled, he began to realize values. What is really important, what is not important. And he said he became very productive at this time of his life when he had no job. He put up his own company. Now, what company did he put up? Pixar. Pixar is the number one animation company in the whole world. He sold it. He founded another company, Next. That's where you have the iPhone. You like iPhone? You like Apple computer? I'm a convert from other computers, from other software to Apple. You know why? I'm not an agent of Apple, so don't get me wrong, okay? But it's a good computer. It's very good. Some of us don't listen. And you know why you don't listen? You are too busy with success. The problem with success, if you're always in the center of the limelight, you get blinded by the glare of success. And there are people today who are here this morning and you're asking yourself, Lord, why are you giving me problems? I have good news for you. In the midst of problem, you are ready to listen. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your failure. They listen. Jesus said, throw the net on the right side. Now, will you do it? The Bible says, they obeyed. And what happened? Look at that verse. Verse 6. Cast the net on the right side. Only a night of total failure will make proud fishermen listen. Now, what about you? Are you listening? Is God speaking to you? 
Well, the Bible tells us they were not able to haul it in because the catch was amazing. Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. You see, many times you cannot see the Lord until you begin to fail. And when you are down, perhaps you can see better. I don't know what's going on in your life. You want to love Jesus? Yes or no? Well, begin focusing on His love for us. He loves you, even when He will allow failures in your life. Look at the next verse. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put his outer garment. The Bible tells us he was stripped for work. In Tagalog, nakahubad. In English, naked. He put on his clothes, jumped into the water. Now, can you understand Peter? Peter is this impulsive guy. Let's go fishing. And now he jumped into the water. The Bible tells us the other disciples came into that little boat. Notice the boat was small. They were not far from the land, but they were 100 yards away, the Bible tells us, and the net was what? Full of fish. Miracle number two, full of fish. What is miracle number one? They caught nothing. That to me is a miracle. To go fishing all night and catch nothing, only God can do it. Yes or no? Now, you want another miracle? When they got into the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed upon it and bread. My goodness, there was a buffet waiting for them. Now, let me ask you, where did Jesus get the fish? You see, the Bible tells us to prove to the disciples that Jesus is who he is. He died and what? Rose again. When he rose again from the dead, he made sure he appeared to the disciples again. Now, he appeared many times. John just recorded this third incident. But notice, where did the fish come from? Use your imagination. I tell you what Jesus did. Fishy, 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 come, 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 jump, Pah! barbecue. Fishy, 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 come, Pah! barbecue. I tell you, Jesus does not need your fish. He does not need your money. But it's a privilege to partner with Jesus. Look at that verse. Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Jesus did not need the fish of the disciples. Yes or no? But he said, okay, bring your fish. Remember, there was already fish. Continue reading. Simon Peter went up, drew the net to land, full of large fish. How many? 153. Now, people have asked me, what is the significance of 153? Now, some Bible teachers will make a big deal out of 153. You know, some of them will say, well, at the time of Jesus, there was only 153 species of fish, and therefore the species of fish represents the total humanity, and someday God will catch them and the net will not break. Ladies and gentlemen, to me, don't complicate the Bible. Very simple. They caught a lot of fish. That's a miracle. And the fish are not small. They were what? Big. And then the Bible tells us, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. What an amazing invitation. Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him. Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Now, the most amazing thing is this. Look at the next verse. Jesus came, took the bread, gave them, and the fish. In other words, Jesus did not just prepare breakfast. He served seven of his disciples. This is now the third time Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. In that context, Jesus now asked. Let's read that together. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, do you understand? Do you love me more than this? Now, what is this more than this? Is it possible that Jesus was referring to the comfort of the fire, to the security of the group of men? Is it possible that the heart of Peter was being drawn to the fish? Is it possible that the heart of Peter was being drawn to his old career? He wanted to go back fishing? I don't know. We don't know. But Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me more than this? Whatever these are, let me ask you a question. Jesus is asking you today, 
Do you love me more than this? What are the more than this of your life? Have you ever asked yourself? How do you know? Let me ask you a question. What is the greatest commandment? In the Bible, the greatest commandment. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Am I correct? What is the first commandment in the Old Testament? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You see, the root sin, the root of all sin is idolatry. Let me give you an example. If you struggle with sex and you keep giving in to sexual immorality, the reason is this. You love sex more than you love Jesus. If you struggle with honesty, if you struggle with compromises, if you struggle in your business practice, the answer is very simple. You love money more than you love Jesus. You got to analyze in your life, what do you love more than Jesus? Jesus tells Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? Let me ask you a question. What makes you angry? How do you know what is the idol or what are the idols of your life? What takes you off? What makes you angry? What makes you so angry? Whatever that is, that can be your idol. What is it that you want to possess so much? You want it so much that when you don't get it, you get depressed, you get angry. What is it? That's your idol. So Jesus asked Peter a legitimate question. Do you love me more than this? Before he asked Peter, he made sure Peter understood that he loved Peter. If you were Jesus, what will you do with Peter? By the way, what was the mistake of Peter? He denied Jesus how many times? Are those serious sins or minor sins? Listen to me. People think it is immorality, murder, robbery. Those are the bad sins. Listen to me. Denying Jesus three times, especially for a Christian leader, is no small matter. But notice what Jesus did not do, and notice what Jesus did. If you were Jesus, what would you do? You know, if I were Jesus, I'll tell Peter, Peter, before we have breakfast, I want to know, why did you deny me? I know some parents, before they forgive, they will tell the son, Aliga! Aliga! And you give a lecture. Peter, I warned you that you will deny me. Why did you not listen to me? Why? 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 Jesus didn't do that. He said, Peter, let's have breakfast. After finishing breakfast, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? You've got to understand God's love. Thomas Edison, when he was inventing the incandescent bulb, remember him? It took him hours. Finally, they were able to design a light bulb. He asked an errand boy, all right, bring this light bulb to the second floor. The little boy got the light bulb, Went to the second floor. As he was going up, he tripped. He fell. The light bulb was broken. Now, what did Thomas Edison do? You know what he did? He assured the boy, it's okay. He went to the team. He said, let us make another light bulb. It took them days. Now, when they finished the light bulb, what did Thomas Edison do? He called the boy again. Come here, young man. Bring this up. By that action, Thomas Edison showed the boy was forgiven, he was affirmed, he is part of the team. When Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? And Peter said, yes, take care of my flock. What was Jesus doing? He was affirming Peter publicly. Peter, I am recommissioning you. Not only are you forgiven, you are restored. Such is the love of God. He does not focus on our mistakes. He does not focus on our weaknesses. 
He focuses on our strength. When God looks at you, He knows your weakness, yes or no. But He does not focus on your past. He does not focus on your failures. He said, all right, let's move forward. Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes. Jesus said, take care of my flock. Look at verse 15. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Note this. He used the word agape. Agape is the word for unconditional love. It is the highest form of love. It is a kind of love that is sacrificial. Then Peter responded, Lord, you know I love you. He used the word phileo. Phileo means deep affection. As a friend. That's where you have the word Philadelphia. Philadelphia means what? The city of brotherly love. Jesus asked Peter the second time, Do you agape me? Peter responded again, Lord, I love you, phileo. The third time, he said to Peter, Peter, do you phileo me? And Peter said, Lord, you know. I love you, phileo you. Then Jesus said, Tend my sheep. Now, some Bible teachers will make a big deal out of these words. Well, sometimes they are used interchangeably. What I want to share with you is simply this Jesus will accept your love, whatever level you are in. For Jesus, it's okay. If you love Jesus this much this morning, it's okay. He will accept it because love must grow. The more you know about Jesus, the more you will love him. And that's why I submit to you. Christianity is about a love relationship with Jesus. If you know Jesus, you will love him. And if you love him, you will never be the same. Do you know the love of Jesus in your life? Have you experienced his love? To love Jesus, what must you learn? His love for you. There was a businessman who was working for an advertising company. He wanted to get a raise because he did an amazing work. He was able to bring in lots of accounts for the agency. So he told his wife, honey, pray for me. I'm going to talk to the boss to give me a raise. Now, I don't know about you. If you have a boss, it's scary. It's very scary to ask for a raise. Well, late in the afternoon, he mastered all of his strength. And he said, boss, can I talk to you? The boss said, what do you want to talk to me about? So they talked. And he asked for a raise. The boss said, okay, no problem. When he got home, he was shocked. He saw candlelight dinner. The napkin set a wonderful reception. He was amazed. He said, honey, who told you I got the race? The wife was quiet. The wife said, well, I knew you will get the race. And when they sat down, there was a note. The note says, congratulations. I know you will get the race. You deserve it. I prepared this dinner to let you know how much I appreciate you and how much I love you. The man was so happy. He said, wow, my wife is really sensitive. He went to the kitchen. On the way to the kitchen, he saw a note on the floor. He picked up the note. He read it. The note says, Honey, don't worry if you don't get the race. You have been a good provider. You deserve the race. I prepared this dinner to let you know how much I love you. When he read the note, he began to cry. Because for the first time he discovered his wife loved him for who he is. With or without race, the wife loved him. Gentlemen, ladies, God loves you. Not based on your performance. Not based on your accomplishment. If you can sink this in your head, if you can let this truth sink in your head, Jesus loves you as you are. As is, where is. Not because of your performance. Not because of what you can do for him. He loves you, period. Once you experience this love, you begin 
to love Jesus. If you don't know His love, you'll be insecure. You'll be always wanting to impress Jesus. And my friends, people who love unconditionally fail to understand the power of unconditional love. I always tell my children, no matter what you have done, I will love you and I'll continue to love you. I tell my wife, no matter what, I love you. Do you know why I can say that? Because Jesus loved me, no matter what. Now, how do you love him? After experiencing his love, he tells us, look at this verse one more time. How do you love Jesus? Very simple. Son of John, do you love me more than this? You see, love is always comparative. The very essence of love is comparative. Do you love me more than? You see, it's one thing to say, you love Jesus. But the real essence of love is, do you love him above all else? You see, Tiger Woods did not understand the rule of love. Before you laugh at him, let me ask you, if your wife or your husband were to tell you, Honey, I really love you. But on Friday night, allow me to spend time with my boyfriend. But remember, I love you. I give you 98% of my love. Only 2% Friday night, I will spend time with my boyfriend. Ladies or gentlemen, what will you say? If your spouse will do that to you, oh, no problem. Go ahead. Anyway, you love me more than you love me. I mean, will you agree? What's the problem with Mrs. Tiger Wood? Notice, she has prestige. She has money, lots of money. She has houses. She has everything. But why was she not satisfied? The essence of love. You want somebody to love you, yes or no? You know, Tiger Woods did not understand the law of love. This is the law of love. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will what? Keep my word. That's the rule of love when it comes to Jesus. This is the rule. This is the love of God. Everybody read. This is the love of God. What? That we keep His commandments. There was a couple. These are yuppies. They love the Lord. They go to church. Now, these yuppies, okay, I'm not referring to the Philippine church, okay? But this is a true story that happened in the States. The wife don't like children. So they agree they won't have children. But they love each other. The man began to get involved in discipling. He saw a young African boy. No family. Lost. And he began to befriend this young boy. He discovered that this young boy was, was not able to live with the family because it was from a, from a broken home. And he was put for adoption in the orphanage. So the boy was living in an orphanage. But he would befriend him. And pretty soon, that young boy came to know Jesus. And the young boy began to change from a hard-hearted young boy. You know, we can destroy kids, okay, by mistreating them. The boy was hard when he first met him, but he, he became softer. Now, when the boy reached 13, there's a rule. You must leave the orphanage. Because the orphanage is only for teenagers. No, the orphanage is for below teenagers. So they have to look for another orphan, another orphanage. The wife began to be bothered because somehow the Lord was speaking to the wife about taking care of that boy. But the wife was struggling with the Lord. The wife said, Lord, you know I don't like children. I did not sign up for this. It's okay for my husband to take care of kids, but not to adopt. For many weeks, she struggled. One night, the husband turned to her, Honey, can I ask you a question? The girl said, Honey, you don't need to ask me. My answer is yes. 
because she learned to love Jesus is to obey Him. Christianity is not complicated. There are rules when it comes to love. For Jesus, if you love me, what's the rule? Serve me. For Peter, the rule was very simple. For Peter, Jesus tells Peter, if you love me, take care of the flock. Obey me. Serve me. Jesus repeated the second time, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes. Very simple. Obey me. Take care of the flock. You see, I am sure Peter and the disciples remember their first encounter with Jesus. Their first encounter with Jesus was in the Sea of Galilee. They went fishing all night. They caught nothing. Remember the first encounter? And Jesus told them, Go, throw the net. And they caught lots of fish. And Jesus told them, From now on, you'll become fishers of men. That was the instruction. What was Peter doing now? He's going back fishing. Fishing for what? Tilapia. If you come with me to the Holy Land, by the way, praise God, the space is basically filled up. Okay? So, you pray. We might have a third bus, okay? But right now, you just pray. You will notice the fish that Peter was catching is called what? In Tagalog, tilapia. What is that in English? Saint Peter's fish. Okay. Now, Jesus is telling Peter, you love me? All right. Take care of men. Take care of the lamb. Lamb refers to what? Baby Christians. They need protection. Next verse. You love me more than this? Shepherd my sheep. Mature Christian. Whatever it is, Peter is telling Jesus. Jesus is telling Peter. You love me? Love people. Very simple. What's the rule? Obey me. You know, Jesus tells Peter, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gear yourself and walk wherever you want to go. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now, this he said, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to Peter, you, follow me. The grammar is, keep following me. Jesus was telling Peter, Peter, you love me? All right. Obey me, follow me. When you were younger, Peter, you used to do whatever you want to do. You go where you want to go. But now, as you mature, you will learn to deny yourself and follow me because you love me. His story tells us Peter was crucified. You see, Jesus told Peter, you are going to be crucified. And his story tells us Peter asked that he not be crucified like Jesus. So he was crucified upside down. These are the writings of the early fathers that Peter was crucified upside down. Whatever it is, Peter knew that to follow Jesus means total commitment. Even if it means dying. My friend, you love Jesus more than this? If your answer is yes, let me ask you, what is he asking you to do? What is he asking you not to do that you are still doing? To follow, to love Jesus is very simple. Obey him. Peter understood the message. The Bible tells us he obeyed Jesus. You know, when Peter was old, he wrote the book of 2 Peter. You want to know what he wrote? This is what he wrote. Let's read this together. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ. The word elder and pastor are used interchangeably in the Bible. Peter said, I am a witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you. 
exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, not for sordid gain, but with eagerness. Notice, Peter was an eyewitness because Jesus recommissioned Peter, take care of my flock. And Peter said, I'm a partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. Peter saw the big picture. Not lording over those allotted your charge, but proving to be examples of the flock. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfailing crown of glory. May I remind all D group leaders, here is an amazing reward for those who will shepherd the flock of God. All of you are shepherds, whether you like it or not. But there's a special crown awaiting God's shepherd. He tells us that they will come when you receive the unfading crown of glory. Ladies and gentlemen, until you are prepared to die, you are not prepared to live. People who don't know how to die, people who are not prepared to die, are not yet living. But if you are prepared, because everything is right between you and God, my friend, your life will be very productive because you will do what God wants you to do. The rule of love when it comes to Jesus is very simple. Do you love me? Answer, obey me. Follow me. Don't complicate it. You see, there are many things in my life I don't like to do. I have to be honest with you. But why do I do it? I love Jesus. There are other things I like to do, but I don't do it. Why? Because I love Jesus. You see, I stand before you here. I'm not perfect. But what motivates me is the love of Jesus and my love for him. And until you can answer that question, do you love me more than this? My friend, I don't think you have understood how much Jesus loves you. That you are forgiven. That he gave his all for you. Now let me ask you one more time. Do you love Jesus? What is his question? Do you love me more than this? Peter turning around saw the disciples whom Jesus loved following him. The one also who had leaned back on his bosom at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one betraying you? So Peter, seeing him, referring to John, said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I want him to remain until now, what is that to you? You follow me. You see, to love Jesus is you follow him. Don't look at other people. Because our problem is we allow others to be an obstacle. Peter was asking Jesus, what about John? What did Jesus tell Peter? None of your business. You see, each one of us is individually accountable to the Lord. In the final analysis, you follow Jesus, not because I'm asking you to follow Jesus. You follow Jesus, not because your wife is following Jesus. You follow Jesus because you love him between you and Jesus. But if you focus your eyes on others, you will stumble. Not only will you stumble, you can be discouraged or you can become proud. Jesus loves you. He asks you a question. Do you love me more than this? Peter was thinking of others. And there are many believers today who have not been discipled properly. Your eyes are focused on people. And you are thinking, well, if this person loved Jesus this much, then I will love Jesus this much. No, no, no. Don't focus your eyes on people. You love Jesus to the best of your ability. Now, let me ask you one more time. You love Jesus? I know you do. Grow in loving Jesus. Because Jesus loves you. This Christmas, if you want to give one gift to Jesus, give him your heart. Tell him, Lord, I love you. Here is the epitaph 
of William Booth. Do you know who is William Booth? William Booth was once upon a time a very poor man. His father went bankrupt. But the Lord got a hold of his life. He became a servant of the Lord. William Booth is the founder of the Salvation Army. Look at this epitaph. Founder of the Salvation Army, but more than that, went home to be with the Lord. Look at the epitaph of his wife. Amazing. Catherine Booth. What does it say? Simple. Went to be with the Lord. You know, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you, what will people write in your epitaph? My prayer is this. Your name. A follower of Jesus. That will be good enough for me. If God were to describe my life as here lies Peter, he loves me. He followed me. I think that's more than enough. Let me ask you, who are you following? You see, all of us are following somebody, whether you like it or not. Are you following yourself? Are you following Jesus? Jesus tells us. He tells Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? Stop looking at others. Keep on following me. You know, there was an epitaph in an old cemetery. It reads something like this. Prepare to die, follow me. And then right behind the epitaph, there's another epitaph that says, to follow you, I will not, until I know where you went. <laughs> Who are you following? Only one life. I suggest you make a choice. Love Jesus and follow Jesus. Now, I want you to imagine if Peter and company became so successful in fishing, if they became so successful in what they were doing, if they did not listen to Jesus, if they insisted on their own plans for their lives, what will happen? You will not know about Peter. You will not know about James. You will not know about John. Friends, to follow Jesus is a privilege. He's asking you, he's asking me, to get involved in something bigger than your life. He's asking you to get involved in something that will outlast all of these temporal things. Do you love me more than this? What are these? Title, money, prestige. He's saying, do you love me more than all of this? He's asking you to trade up, not to trade down. Life is, a, life is about choices. Now, I made a choice years ago. Lord, I will love you. I will follow you. What about you? If your answer is, Lord, I will follow you, he tells you how to love him. Obey him. It has to do with taking care of people. You may not realize this. God wants you to be a shepherd in your family. You have a flock that he has given you. You see, all of us have circles of influence. For some of you, it's your family. That's okay. For some of you, it's bigger. It's your company. You have thousands of employees. Well, God is telling you, shepherd the flock I've entrusted to you. For some of you, it's your office mate. I don't know what it is. For some of you, you are a D group leader. For some of you, it's about time God is telling you, step up, take care of the flock. If you love Jesus, you obey him. Don't settle on second best. Don't settle on the comfort of the charcoal fire. Don't settle on the security of having breakfast with your loved ones. He is saying, do you love me more than this? Follow me. Shepherd my flock. Now, vice versa. What are you doing that you should stop doing? Just start with one thing. Whatever you are doing now, because it is not obeying Jesus, and you know what those things are, stop it. Do you love Jesus? Obey him. And my friend, if we love Jesus, our life will never be the same. CCF will never be the same. You know why? Because God's going to use you. He's going to use us to transform millions of others. 
Do you love Jesus? He loves you. You tell me, Peter, I have failed so many times. It doesn't matter. What's your past? Peter, I cannot do it. I have failed. That's past. Today. You love Jesus? Yes or no? You love Jesus more than what? Let's bow our heads. Pray. Will you privately talk to Jesus? He's asking you a simple question. Do you love him? If you love him, what must you do? May I suggest the following while your heads are bowed down. What about making a commitment to study the Bible? How will you know Jesus if you don't study the Bible? What about making a commitment to humble yourself and ask others to help you? Perhaps some of you, you love your religion more than you love Jesus. If there are wrong practices in your religion, are you willing to give it up? What about your private moral life? Perhaps God is telling you, you need to change. Whatever it is, Jesus is asking you, do you love me? If you love him, then stop doing whatever is not pleasing to him. He gives you, he gives us the word. He tells you what he likes, he tells you what he does not like. Now what about your business practices? If you love Jesus, he tells you, shepherd your family. Gentlemen, I'm asking you, are you taking care of your family? Are you being a good example? Peter wrote the book of Second Peter, the book of Peter, shepherd my flock, be a good example, love them. You love people, whatever it is, you make that decision today. And you tell Jesus, Lord, here I am. You love me. I want to love you. Whatever you do, do it because you love Jesus. And if you don't love Jesus, you tell him, Lord, I don't really love you. Forgive me. Give me a new heart. Father God, I thank you for your love for us. Lord, perhaps there are some here today who have never experienced your unconditional love. Lord, they have never experienced your forgiveness. They have never invited you in their hearts as their Lord and Savior. Please pray with me something like this. Lord Jesus, this Christmas, I want to receive your love. I want to receive you into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Lord Jesus, I humble myself. Come into my life. I receive your forgiveness. I receive you as my personal Savior and my personal Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving all of us. Teach us to love you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen and amen.
wherever you are. Why don't you thank the Lord? Just say thank you, Jesus. For your convenience, the offering boxes are all over the facility. Have a blessed and Merry Christmas, everyone. In the presence of our King, there is joy forevermore. Oh, yes. Let us lift our voice and sing songs of glory.